Okay, once you're in your Google Classroom, you'll see that today we're gonna to start a new activity. We are gonna go back to working in the app we were in, Google Slides, and we're gonna go back to collaborating like we did with the community agreement, tic-tac-toe, and with the Lizzo document. And this time we're collaborating on a slide. It's not much different than collaborating on a document. And you'll see why in just a second. At the very bottom here is the link that I introduced on Monday. If you want to sign up, need to sign up for interventions on Friday, please do so. Use this purple link. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and delve into our assignment. I need you to do it with me. So please scroll up to the top of your page or click on the bottom on classwork. From here, we're gonna scroll on down and we are going to work on the very first assignment. So <clears throat> the very first assignment is timeline. So when we click on timeline, it says what I reiterated that we're working in pairs collaboratively on one Google slide. I have um, created a slide here for you. When you click on it, it will even put your name on it. You don't have to go out to Google Slides. It's right here. Now, don't do it just yet because we're gonna work in pairs and you don't know who your partner is yet. So you don't know which one should open it and which one should share it. So pause. Okay, now let's look at the other resources you have attached here in the assignment. You have a example of a timeline. And this is the one we saw the other week in our ICED online, actually in the PowerPoint. I thought it would be a good example because we've seen it before. So this is what we're doing. We're creating a timeline of the history of cameras. Now, this one is a history of communication devices. We went over these last week. 1844, we have the telegraph here. It wasn't digital, but it sent and received messages just fine. We have the telephone, 1876, also not digital. It's not a wireless, cordless phone you walk around with, but it sent and received messages. And then the radio in 1921, it also sent out a message and so did the TV. In 1925, it was black and white and it looked very much like this, a tube TV. And it sent out a message or programs. And then the computer in 1946, which did not look like this because the first computer, only one computer would fit in a room. It would literally take up a big room. So. It's nice to have timelines because we can see where uh, we started with inventions and where they've progressed up until now. So we're gonna practice formatting a slide for a timeline. And we're gonna come back over and see what exactly else we need to know. So I will always put everything you need to know in your assignment. An example. And now we're going to look at the cameras. The cameras we're going to be documenting on this timeline. Like last time when we did the PowerPoint, I'm gonna advise that you guys have a pen and paper around. It could be a scrap sheet of paper. It doesn't have to be the best looking sheet of paper, but you do need a pen and paper. We're going to write down 10 cameras and the 10 years they were invented. It'll actually save you a step later on. Okay, if I ever tell you to write something down, like on the slides, it was to regurgitate it in the student notes. Here, we're gonna regurgitate it on a timeline. So it's for a purpose. So I'm going to have my notepad and my pen here. We're gonna watch this together. There's no audio to it. Um, there's music, but we're gonna turn that off. We don't need it. And we're gonna take a look at the invention of cameras. This is really important in our course, Principles of 80, because there'll be times during the year where we're taking photos, and then there'll be times of the year where we're taking videos. So where did it all originate from? From the first camera. Here it is. This big boxy looking apparatus was the pinhole camera. 
it was a box with one hole at the end. And you see a gentleman here, he's got the back part open and there's a slant board. And most likely he had a form of photo paper there to gather the light where the image would be printed or ingrained on that sheet. Now, interesting fact, when I was in high school, our teacher made us make a pinhole camera. She told us to bring a shoe box to school that had a lid. And then we were to poke a hole on one end of the shoe box and she put a sticky over it. Well, actually there weren't stickies when I was in high school, but she taped a little sheet of paper on it. And then in the inside, she gave us an undeveloped sheet of photo paper. And where this little slant is in the box, we taped our photo paper and we put our lid on our shoe box. She took us outside to the parking lot and said, pick a car. So we picked a car we wanted to photograph, put the box, the shoe box on the ground, took off the sort of sticky and left it for 30 seconds. We let light go in the box through that little hole we pulled for 30 seconds. And then there was an invisible image that was imprinted on the photo paper she gave us. We taped the paper back, we carried our shoe box back into the school, and we had something called a dark room. It was like a closet with no light, just a red light. And we would go in there with her two at a time, and we'd take our lid off our shoe box, take our photo paper out, and then dip it back and forth in two different solutions. And then we had a clothesline, and we would clip our photo paper there. <laughs> and leave it overnight. Then the next day when we went to school, because we didn't have A and B day schedule, so the next day when we went back to class, 24 hours later, we would go in the dark room, turn on the light, and our picture would be there hanging, fully developed on the clothesline. So that's how we learned about the pinhole camera. What you need to know is that you're going to take this right pinhole, camera 1500 all right now let's okay, get the camera i have a shoe box so that that's what you would need to make a pinhole camera jason <laughs> the shoe box i got like 20. I, I feel you. I keep my shoe boxes too. I like, it gives your closet some organization, right? Well, if we were in school and we had the solutions, we would make a camera out of a shoe box, a pinhole camera. Now here's the next pinhole camera. It progresses. You'll notice it's got a little bit bigger lens on it, or it's made out of the same material, but the hole is larger to let in more light. It is called the daguerreotype because it's made by a guy with the last name Daguerre. So let's write that down. I have a student calling me. <laughs> hey Charles, we're in class. Can you get in the Zoom? Is that James Charles? Hi, Charles. Um, we're in the Zoom meeting for our class. Can you join? Oh, can you? I want to eat that dog. Okay, well, I'm teaching class. Can you come in the Zoom room where I can answer your question? Okay, the link is on the website. And if you need some assistance, I'll be glad to help you get in the Zoom room after I finish getting our classmates started. Twenty minutes. Call me in twenty minutes. Ow. Call me in twenty to thirty minutes, okay? You're okay. Bye-bye. Okay. 
So if you ever have trouble getting in class, just call me. And since we're in class, I'll answer it just like you're raising your hand in our physical classroom. Okay, so you've written this down. It was a long name to write down. And we're ready to go on with number three, the third camera. So the third camera, also a box, looks like an accordion. It looks like something, um, like an instrument. Oops. We'll go back. It almost looks like a, an accordion that a mariachi would use to play a song. <laughs> but it's a camera and it's still a box. And this is the rice camera. So rice, what? what was already created with the pinhole camera and he modified it. And this modified camera is named after him. It was right. made in 1900. So exactly 120 years ago, this was your camera. I'm pretty sure you can make some more chocolate with that. I'm pretty sure you cannot make bachata or chata with this camera. That's right. Okay. Who knows? There's possibilities. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our next camera. So the next camera, also a box, is called the Kodak Brownie. So I have one here to show you. This my one. Dog, my dog got stuck. <laughs> this one uh, belonged to my grandmother. She passed away when I was in junior high, so about 30 years ago. And it was passed down to my mom, and I borrowed it from her today to show it to you. This camera used this kind of film and it says black and white film. And this would be unrolled and inserted in the back of the camera. You would take a photo and then advance the film, take another photo and advance the film. And that's how this particular camera worked. It's so small. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Um, you can actually find these on the internet if you go to websites like eBay. If you wanted like a camera for decoration, obviously, you know, they're not made anymore. My grandmother probably used this in 1930. My mom was born in 1951 and this was passed to my mom and she used it. And um, She's got two rolls of film that can't be developed because there's nowhere to develop this film. Miss, anymore. there's my cat. Uh, <laughs> our fur babies from fourth period. <laughs> How cute. And on the side of the film box would be the date, the expiration date. Here's a color film. And believe it or not, it says July 1975. So this film is three years older than I am. This is it, the color film. I was born in 1978, and this film says 1975. That's cool. That's the box of film for your Kodak Brownie. All right, we're halfway through our cameras. Let's go ahead and and go ahead and get through our little one minute video. The next camera, after you've written down Kodak Brownie, is the El Leica. So look, it's not so boxy anymore. And now it is this long rectangle. And that rectangle is called a body. So now cameras started to have a body and a lens. 1925. If I'm going too fast, Stop me. You miss. Yes. Wait, what was that? Wait, what was the last one? The before the yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that one. I mean. That was the Kodak Brownie. Alright, thank you. <laughs> Jason, are you writing these down? Or are you playing with Hendrix? I like brownie. You really can't write it down because I ran out of paper, and Hendrix ate all my pencils. So. Okay, so you're going to be start stopping this video when you do your slides in a minute. Okay, okay. the next 
camera, the Polaroid camera. You should go to Walmart. <laughs> uh, my grandmother didn't have much, but she had two cameras. She lived on a farm and she had chickens and uh, all kinds of farm animals and they ate the food um, from their farm animals. And she had cameras though, and she liked to take pictures. Here's the second camera she had, a Polaroid. Some of you had these vintage Polaroid pictures you might have wore around school last year. Vintage Polaroid uh, t-shirts were very popular last year. And yeah, they represent this vintage camera. This one doesn't have the accordion uh, like you see, but it is a similar model and it is a Polaroid made by Polaroid. Okay, so you've got the year 1975. 1947. Oh, thank you. Uh, a little dyslexic sometimes. Read that backwards and off by a number. 1947. And what was cool about these photos is they made cameras is they made instant photos. So after you took the photo, there's a latch here and you would open the steel latch and then the back door would open up and you could take the photo out. How many of you have instant cameras? They were really popular four winters ago. I have one of those, um, those things where it's like wood and steel at the same time. To where you lift it up and it will go like this, just like in a case. Maybe you can show it to us sometime. Did any of you guys have one of those Polaroid cameras? Uh, it was called Instance. Yes. Target was selling them four years ago or five years ago. Okay, so they're predecessors from this camera. No. No. All right, now our next one, the first digital camera. Um, I don't remember this when I was young, but supposedly digital cameras had their start in 1975. I could bet that this is a, a blooper and supposed to be 1985, but we'll go ahead and honor this date. Now you can say 75. 1975. All right, if we've got that written down and we're ready to wrap this up, we're going to the next one. And this one is really interesting because I know that some of you have used one of these before. How many of you have used a disposable camera? Uh, Anna has. I have. I have. Me? And Hector, okay. Maybe you use these to go on field trips when you were younger because, well, if you lost it, you were only out $4. So mom and dad were more likely to let you take one of these disposable cameras. This is what I used when I was in, uh, in college or high school. I would buy these disposable cameras. Also, you might have seen them at weddings. Bride and grooms sometimes would buy them and put them in the middle of the reception tables. And the guests would take photos during the reception. And then at the end of the evening, they would leave and leave the disposable camera in the middle of the table. And the bride and groom would take all of these cameras and develop them. And then they had the photos for their wedding album. So. That was a really cool use of these disposable cameras. 1986, there's a, lots of brands, but Fuji made this quick snap in 1986. After that, Kodak made some too. All right, now our next one is the first cell phone that took photos. It was a Japanese brand cell phone called the J-Sharp or for short, JSHO4. Of course, Japanese. <laughs> I don't know if they were able to send the photos anywhere since uh, they were not smartphones at the time and there were no little chips in the, the phones, no little um, micro SD cards to take out and you know take to Walmart and put in the bigger card and put in the machine and print. But you could keep the photos on the phone and, and go through your photos. This was the world's first camera phone. Okay. 
I don't have one of these. I Miss, can you go back, please? Yes. Are we good? Yeah. Does anybody have a GoPro? I'm going to get one. I always wanted one of these. What's really nice about these cameras are that you can take them anywhere and do anything. You could put it on a harness on Hendrix, Jason's dog, and let it run around for a day and record the day in the life of your dog from your dog's perspective. I've got one somewhere around here. What, Cameron? I said I've got one somewhere around here. Have you tried to do something like that with yours? What have you done with yours? I don't know. I think I threw it one time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So a little history on this camera. Uh -huh. they're, they're pretty sturdy cameras. Uh, the first one was made in 2002 by a surfer. This guy loved sports. He liked to skate, he liked to surf, and he liked to ski. And like most athletes, they want to see what they look like doing their sport. So he created this little camera, almost like a pinhole camera, a box two inches by two inches. And his favorite sport was surfing. His name was Nick. And he wanted a camera that would be waterproof, that he didn't have to worry about turning on, and he could just get on his surfboard and surf. So he created this and he created a watertight housing, a waterproof housing for it. And then he made these elastic bands to connect to each side of the waterproof housing. And then he would strap it onto his chest, get on his surfboard, paddle out in the water, didn't have to worry about turning it on, didn't have to worry about water getting on it. He would stand up on a surfboard and he would be recording his experience and getting all the surfers around him. And it became quite popular. Everyone wanted one. He marketed it, advertised it, sold the first GoPro in 2002. And you could get them anywhere at the time. Academy, Dick's, you can buy them on Amazon. And since then, he's made different modifications to it, such as this one you're looking at. In 2008, he made it HD. You could buy an HD version of the GoPro. Um, there's a lot of bicyclists and dirt bike people who get them and put them on the handlebars of their dirt bikes so they can record their trips. And there's others that use them for other sports. Very cool. So 2008 was the GoPro HD Hero. Here's the last camera. This is it. It is the body of a Canon camera. We don't have the lens here, but the focus is on these cameras that could take photos and videos. They're called high-end DSLRs. I'll break it down. D stands for digital. You don't have to write this down. D stands for digital. S stands for single, because there's a single mirror, piece of a mirror inside there. You can't see it, but there's a little mirror in there. And reflex, because when you press the button to take a picture, the mirror pops up and down. And that's what the camera does. You take a picture, the light goes in like the pinhole camera, it hits the mirror, and it reflects down an image to the SD card. That's how the camera works. And just so you know, fun fact, photography means writing with light. So all of these cameras captured in light to imprint some sort of image, to write an image. Okay, now that we've got the history of cameras, we're gonna go back and we're gonna plot them on this timeline. Since there's 10, there'll be five at the top and five at the bottom. Easy breezy. I meant to attach a blank timeline and it looks like I attached a timeline that I was showing as an example so when you click on it you actually have a made timeline um, yeah so what I wanted you to learn 
was a new formatting option, the line tool. Not new, but one we haven't learned yet. So up here on the lines, if you click line, it brings down a menu with all kinds of creative lines. So if you wanna make yours really jazzy, you could use one of these lines right here. I chose this one and I just dragged a line across my slide because I need to use all of it. And then over here, if we go back, select line again. I chose arrow, you can choose something else. And I made my year markers. There's one. Now, there's 10 cameras. You're gonna do five, map them out. Your partner is gonna use this second half of the slide and they're gonna map out five cameras. And this is what I would do. I would just copy it and paste it, paste it, paste it. And I've got my five lines from my side of the timeline. And then I would just use my arrow keys and then move them where I want them to be. And I need more room. So I'm going to put an inch between them and then I'm gonna take one, click on the top and I'm going to turn it inside out. So it's pointing to the bottom if it's hard to do that on your device, you can come over. I'll show you another way to do it. You can go to Arrange, Rotate, and then you can say to flip it vertically. And now the line is going downward and you can just use your arrow keys to put them where you want them. Okay, any questions so far? No, ma'am. I'm gonna show you another tip I forgot to mention to the other classes. You can make your slide wider. You can make your, your slide to be longer if you want to. Um, there's a formatting option in there. Let's see if I can remember. Size. <clears throat> oh, I've already got mine created. But you would come over here to size and where it says width, mine says 100. You can type in 600 and it'll give you a longer, a wider slide, a real wide slide to work with. My lemon queen has been overtook. You know what? While we're here, let, let's see if we can do it here together and then I'll let you play with it. All right, so here's a blank one. Let's go to format. Let's make this widescreen. Oh, we have to click on the slide so it's highlighted in yellow. Then go to format. Make sure nothing else is open. Okay. I may have to go back and figure out what step I'm missing since it's not allowing me to do it right here. I might need to do it somewhere else but we need this option right here under format that we saw previously in the previous slide. And we need to change the width of our, our slide if we want it bigger. If not, you can just work with this one. Okay, any questions? You're gonna need to insert cameras, but I'm gonna go from breakout room to breakout room and I'm going to demo that part. Okay, if there's no questions, I'm gonna put you in groups of two. And you're going to get in the breakout room and say, hey, um, do you want me to open it or are you going to open it? I'll open it. Okay. And so you open up the slide and you're going to share it, right? Because you want them to write on it at the same time. So when you're sharing, what's the first thing that we do? What, what should we do for sharing this a slide? We should come up here and click the share button and type in our friend's email address, our partner. Okay, so let's say Hector's my partner. Hector, what, what's your email address? Um, 24hector.galarza. Okay. Yeah, the first one. And all I'm gonna do is click send and then Hector's gonna have a copy of it. 
And then in the breakout room, I can share my screen or Hector can share his screen and we can look at it while we're working on it at the same time. Or he can be working on his device. I can be working on it on my device and we can still see what each other is doing on the respective screens. Now, when you come to the point where you're gonna add your pictures, you're gonna to go to insert, search from web. That way you don't have to go open another window, another tab, and if you're on a phone, you're going between windows and tabs, but it's right here. Google is on this side of my page, and I'm gonna type in the camera I'm looking for, the Kodak Brownie. When my computer wants to type, it'll type it. And I'm going to put camera And I'm going to type at the end, transparent background. All right, let's say that I really like this one right here. I double click on it, it appears. I'm gonna reshape it. I'm gonna put it near the, the year marker that this particular brownie was made. Then I'm gonna to go to the type tool. The type tool is right above my slide. And I'm going to click one time. It's gonna make a text box. I'm gonna write Kodak brownie. What year was the Kodak brownie made? Nineteen hundred. Nineteen hundred. Thank you. I might want to change my font or whatever. The color and so forth. But now I'm good to go. All right, at the very end, each group is going to pick a one camera they really like, and they're going to research it on the internet, and they're gonna fill in these blanks I have in here on the speaker notes. I'll share that part with you in your breakout room. Are there any questions? No, ma'am. Okay, have fun. I'm gonna be popping in quite frequently this time. And that's because the morning class has finished this so quickly. And I want to make sure that you don't have any questions before you turn it in and that we're all square with how it looks and your partner agrees uh, with it before you submit it. 